Hey guys, Kylo's back. I don't usually shoot the intros first, but I feel like this is gonna be pretty easy. We're gonna make a mold. I had a like a kind of a propeller molding video earlier. It was sort of half-hearted. I was it was more work than it was actually video production. But I've brought out like the studio lighting and I'm gonna set it up in the shop and I got the good camera over here in the corner and we're gonna make like a proper how to make a propeller mold video. I use these things to repair damaged propeller tips. I've got some that are due for the fixing and we're gonna build some molds so that we can do more than one tip at once. Now the propellers that I use more than any in my paramotor school are these Helix. They, I guess there's an E-Prop. I got some other ones too. I'm not like a you better use this brand or nothing else kind of guy. That's what I got. That's what we're gonna make the molds for. I've got some brand new Helix propellers over here. I think we need to make probably I'll probably lose more tips on the Atom 80s than I do the Mosters. So we're gonna build a mold for an Atom 80 propeller. And I'm gonna use uh, fiberglass, carbon fiber, and I'm gonna use not the polyester uh, resin, but I'm gonna use epoxy resin. I've never done one with epoxy resin, but I thought this might be a good time to try. So let's do it. are some of my old molds I've taken pictures over the years I've made a bunch of these things I use them for propeller tip repairs but this is gonna be for one of the newer ones I documented the entire process this is it this is an Adam 80 propeller it's brand spanking new first thing you want to do is clean it really really well you don't want any dust or debris or smudges or oils and then you want to coat it PVA mold release. This stuff dries into a very thin film. See here, you can't even see it. It still has the same shine that it did as normal. And I'm gonna start building up my layers of fiberglass and epoxy resin. Most of this stuff was done over the course of almost a month. You know, every evening I'd put on a couple of layers, uh, videos, you know, it all turned into about a minute of video, but it's actually about a month's worth of work here. Just every evening I would come fix, fix a couple layers up. Now this first layer, the layer that's going to contact the propeller, is very important that you don't get any bubbles in there next to the, the parting edge, that edge that goes around the edge of the propeller. Now there's no particular reason that I used carbon fiber here other than I had a little piece of it and I wanted to be able to see it on the inside of the mold. Just an aesthetics thing, and uh, most of it's fiberglass. Uh, that's the next few layers that's gonna come up. Now this next little bit is just repetitive. Paint some epoxy, throw down a piece of the fiberglass, paint some epoxy, throw down a piece of fiberglass. The whole time making sure to get any bubbles eliminated out of the system. As long as that bottom layer is good though, the rest of it's just bulk reinforcement that holds the shape. And I'll probably overdo it here, but this is it. Let me speed it up for you. This is probably the bulk of the work here. Every, every day I might do a layer in the morning, layer in the afternoon, maybe one in the evening if I'm up late. Uh, if you get it on there while it's still tacky, it tends to hold pretty good. If you let it get all the way cured, you gotta sand it a bit. This tape doesn't stick. That's epoxy tape is what it was called. Oh, that was that was glued to it there. I'm gonna have to cut that or grind it off or something. Okay, do we see any? I think I might have caught the edge good. I don't see where it bled into the inside of this, so take a little air. You see the the mold release stuff there. Oh no, it did go around it a little there, but this side maybe not. Look at there, still good. That's what you want. You want to get the mold around the parting line. That's that parting line. And a propeller's hard to do because the parting line is curved. It's not just on a plane. You can't just set it level and go there, right? That's pretty easy when you have a symmetrical part. do 
use some registration keys and I'm just using the meal here there are several different ways to do this this is just what I did on this one I've done them many different ways over the years but I milled out some little half circles all the way around the edge and I'm gonna go back and clean those up and then when I make the other half of the mold it'll have one way to register where it always goes back together exactly right that's the point of this After it's milling and sanding, it's going to leave some pretty rough edges on the finish. And there's a couple ways you can do it. You can sand it down, go through your grits, and end up at a high polish. Or you can mask it off and paint on some epoxy resin and just let it dry in a naturally smooth state. It fills in all those micro gaps. And I just had the tape there to prevent little drops maybe from dripping inside of the mold. That's the whole point of that. Now it's time for the clay. This was the first time I've ever used clay in any of my mold making. And let me tell you, it makes a difference. Boy, this one did come out nice. That's why I chose this one for the video. I do have some other video of some previous molds. I might, I might do that in an edit sometime. But this prevents the next layers from going down underneath the plug, which is the propeller. You call it the plug during a mold making session. And you're just going to seal up the cracks and make sure it cannot let the epoxy go down underneath the propeller. That gives it a good parting line very important this tool here makes a nice radius once you get the clay how you like it you want to give it a nice five to seven coats of wax this is with wax as it hazed off and then buff it I didn't film all the steps but I did this several times until I had a nice shiny plug then coated with PVA and then repeated the process of building the layers I did not video the other half of this it looks just like the first part of the video where I just added the layers I, actually, I may have videoed just the first part where I put down the first layer of carbon fiber. Yeah, that's coming right up. Check this out. There's one that's been damaged and repaired and then damaged again. There's one that's primary damage right there. We'll sand that a bit. Same here. Yeah, I mean, once they're damaged, you gotta feather them. You gotta feather them there at the edges on the big belt sander. This one, I don't know. I may try just a band aid on that one. It don't take much to hold these together. We'll see. And then this one's just got some some stuff on it, some minor damage. I can fix that easy. We might put the sacrifice prop back in there, huh? That might be a thing. Sand it a bit. Yeah, who knows. I decided to use this piece as a template so that I can trace the, the contours of the propeller. It's important how the carbon fiber comes off the roll. You want that curve to fit the outside of your propeller curve. And just to better explain what I'm talking about here, this carbon fiber, as it comes off the roll, you see how it takes this curve. Now it'll hold that curve even after you cut it. So you want to make sure that those curves fit inside of the mold so that you cut your piece that it goes like this or this. You wouldn't want the piece that goes on this side to be cut like this. You would want it to have the bend in the material to go into the mold. That's what I was explaining there. Just wanted to make sure that came out right.
Now off camera, I prepared the molds with the release agent so that now it has a thin film of release on the molds so that anything inside of it won't stick. The propeller is prepped and we are ready for epoxy. Important to have everything laid out, ready to go before you mix your epoxy because you got limited working time with some, some chemistries. This chemistry on this epoxy gives me about 40 minutes of work time, so there's no rush, and I always put more than I need down. The excess will pull up or run off or drip through the small crack at the bottom of the mold, but ultimately, most of it will stay right where you want it. I'm sure you've seen me use the heat gun periodically throughout the video. What that does is it lowers the viscosity of the epoxy without changing the chemistry. You wouldn't want to thin it with acetone or anything. That could weaken the final product. But heat lets it get sort of runny and lets the bubbles come to the top and pop. That way there's not a lot of air entrapment in the epoxy itself. It lets it soak through into the carbon fibers better. So having, a, having the proper temperature is important. But a little bit of heat gun will make everything sort of thin out real nice. Pop all those bubbles. Get it to a nice clear consistency. This is where those registration keys are like money in the bank. Perfect, exact fitment. And now we get to see the results. Let's demold this thing and see what we're looking at here. Thinking that I'm gonna like it. It seems to be just a near perfect repair job. Peel off the, uh, the mold release, you know, do a quick sanding. Now the purpose of a molding repair is you save yourself some sanding on the back end. This is gonna take a very minimal sanding and then a rebalance and this propeller will be ready for action. I know it takes a couple weeks to build the mold, but if you do this, ultimately it saves you time if you're doing many propeller repair jobs. Uh, certainly you could just slather on some epoxy, sand it back down to a good shape and it'll fly. But this saves time here at the grinder and that's what I'm doing here. I'm actually sanding several propellers For the school propellers, I only sand it down to about a 220 grit finish, maybe 600 if I'm feeling like I want to change the belt, but for a customer repair, I usually go a little further, make it nice, shiny, and pretty. And then comes the rebalance. This is my rebalancer. I've got it so that's adjustable, made for different prop hubs, and it's just a simple gravity balancer. You set it on here and you can balance it on all axes without changing anything. Very easy to see. You can add weight to it as it's balanced. This is my preferred balancer. Now, as you can see, this one is heavy on the right, falling down pretty good. So I mark where I need to add the weight and the way I do it, it just depends on how much weight I need. This one needed a lot of weight. It was just tinking hard. So I needed to add some weight on the left there. I drill a hole and I inject an epoxy mix that I make. I thicken it up with glass or fiber or anything that really gives it like a cake frosting consistency. The idea being that you do not want it to run inside the propeller. Where you squirt it is where you want it to stay. So here I'm drilling the holes. I'll just let you check this out as I go through it. Now 
Now, what I ran into with this particular balancing is I had to inject a lot of this mixture to get it to balance properly. And what was happening was there's nowhere for the air to go out. So it was pushing the epoxy back up out of the hole. And I had to drill a vent hole on the backside a little bit. Just so as I pushed in the mix, it would push air out. It was, it's like blowing up a balloon. It gets to a point where it's a pressure vessel and you can't push any more epoxy resin inside of the propeller. After the vent relief, it allowed me to get what I needed in there. And you can see that it's getting really close to balancing. In fact, it's a little heavy on that side. But when I wipe it off and get the surface clean, it comes out just right. And then I just put a little spackle over there to fill in that other hole. And when I get it right how I like it, I put some tape on it. See what I'm looking at. And this one looks like it's going to need just a little bit more. I like it. Pretty simple. And I'll include the other one in this video just to make it extra long so that not as many people will click on it. Never claim to be good at YouTubing, but I like making videos, so I'm going to make this part too. That's about it. That's how I do mold making uh, for propeller tip repair. If you like this content, pop a thumbs up down there. Come back, see me, subscribe for more. I have all kinds of different content, mostly related to paramotor, but also other stuff too. Much love, everybody. Hope you fly safe out there. Kyle out.